So when he got into that compulsive, we got anybody watching it, you got to end it. Otherwise, they get faster and faster. And it's always to the right, too. He's right handed. Hey, Tuffy. <laughs> I got some of the crew here. We'll take a minute or two and talk about the video that we're gonna watch. What we have is a couple of beagles, litter mates. <laughs> okay, happy. They're litter mates. One has separation anxiety and one has containment phobia. Uh, the one with separation anxiety doesn't have separation anxiety with humans, has it with the fact that her brother is uh, phobic whenever he's contained. So that's the one we're gonna work with. It's 28 minutes long. It took an hour and a half. I was sitting in that position for an hour and a half. The dog was in that position for an hour and a half. The people who videoed, my students were in it for an hour and a half. And I cut it down to 28 minutes of, of just exactly everything you need. It, it makes the transformation that much uh, more, I don't know, I want to say beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I'll go on record right now saying that was a beautiful transformation this dog makes. You got to have a lot of patience when you're working with dogs and especially dogs like this. It's just very important that everyone understands that working with dogs with this type of uh, behavior issue is time consuming. And if you're not willing to take the time to watch a video, that shows you how to take care of that, then you're gonna have a big problem when it's time for you to take care of it yourself. My point is that there are many, many paths to the same destination. And the way I do things may not be the way anyone else does them, but you cannot argue with the results. Uh, this dog went through a lot. It's blind, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. He, he struggled real hard to get to this calm place that we get to at the end, and I'm very proud of him. And I would be disrespecting him and the struggles he went through if I cut this video any shorter than it already is. And uh, with that said, enjoy. Got lost? So this dog here is a beagle that we did coming out of the crate. The other one is blind and he doesn't like to go in the crate. And my interpretation of it is hey, hey, because this is not a wire crate, it's he can't see, so when he gets in there, it's kind of hollow and the back of the crate is right there, so all the sound bounces, it doesn't seem to him like he can go in. It, it, in his brain, it's like too confined. It, it's not supposed to go in there. So he's got an unrealistic understanding. Hey, hey, that's enough. He's got an unrealistic understanding of that the crate. So we just basically made the, the hot cold game with this dog. I want him to smell the safety. So it doesn't look fair to him at first as I put him in there, but I need him to understand it's safe in there. And then we will backtrack and have him walk in where he, he, he feels it's safe. I'm gonna be as kind as I can be, but it's not fair to just shove a dog in. And right now, he's, his uh, oppositional reflex is trying to come out. Based on, I mean, I'm not pushing it, I'm just holding it, but he's still got a, a little resistance on it. And uh, until his nose opens, we're gonna stay in this locked position. He's starting to be less tense, but his nose didn't open up like I thought it, it would. So we have to wait until it opens. His treats aren't gonna work for a stressed dog. 
And if I just throw the treat in there when he doesn't want to go in and he goes in and eats the treat and I shut the door, I just fed the uncertainty and the anxiety or the stressful part. So I would much rather give him food when he's in there and he's calm so that that represents, the whole environment represents calm. So right now I'm just, I'm just basically holding him in position until that nose opens. As the dog melts more and more, I, I try to move my hands out of there more and more. My goal is for him to uh, be upright before he goes in, because there's no way he's going in right now. You can see the arrows of his elbows and his, his ankles pointing in the direction he wants to go. So his mouth is closed and it would appear that he could use his nose right now, but this is stressful for him. So he's in one of those uh, phases where he's not using his nose to, to scent and understand things. He's using his nose just to keep his, enough air in his, in his lungs. The whole time he's in there, he feels he's trapped and that's why you get the anxiety uh, when you come back and you see that he didn't feel safe. And so it, he's gonna feel safe about it uh, before I shut this. My goal for this particular exercise is to have him walk in and walk out and then walk back in and shut the, the crate. That's my sole goal. As we go, if I'm not achieving that goal in a timely fashion that, that we have allotted, I will then change my goal to something closer to wherever his mind is so that we end, there we go, so that we end as close to, I want to end the way I want it to begin, but if we can't do that today, I want to end it as close to the way I want it to begin. And you can see that his body starting to rise. That means all his energy is starting to be centered rather than trying to... Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so I don't mind that he ran out right now. That's not my goal. The goal is ultimately to have him walk in and then walk out. He kind of escaped out. So there we go. You'll see here in a moment when his energy is centered his mind is more centered. And then you'll start to see his body leaning forward. What gear is he in? He's in reverse. <laughs> so he's got his head out here, but he's not trying to escape out here. I want him to be able to see where he'd like, or sit where he'd like to go. But then there's the mouth. Okay, so now we got some breathing action going. I've just simply limited his options. He's got really, He's got multiple options, he can fight if he wants, but the, the real best option is just to, to go in. I've limited all his space. He can't go to the right, he can't go to the left, he can't go backwards. He can try, and he might get by, but right now he's just kind of, this is like the bumpers. This spot right here has always been a, I mean, never been a positive. It's always, get me out of here, or don't put me in here. This right here. He cannot see, but we're developing a picture for him. Uh, there you go. He wants to sit down so he's relaxing, but I'm saying you get him relax in there. I mean, his body's already way, way less tense. Look how it's folding than it was when we first started, so we're getting there. We're developing this picture right here. And when he decides to go in there, then he lets go of what it used to look like. And there's no pain, there's no, the only stress here is, is uh, a positive stress because the stress he normally feels in this uh, doorway is negative stress. So this is positive stress. Again, because he's had five years practice in that state of mind, five years. This amount of time right here is nothing, but if I take this time right here in this one spot where it looks like I'm not doing anything, if I take this time and he decides to go in on his own, well, that is more valuable than me pushing him in, pulling him out, pushing him in, pulling him out. Yeah, see, he's really loose now. See how his energy's more centered and upright? You see, he's not in a backward state, you see? He's not in reverse, he's in neutral right now. And this is really good. My hands. Incrementally, it's, 
I don't even know if you guys can see it. It's, it's a feeling. You know, I can feel when he's melting, like he's starting to melt. Really, yeah, that's right. Because he's, this is so new, any change if I lift him up, move him, ah! But look how loose he is now, you know, see? Any challenge for him has been stressful because he's blind. So it, it's good to change uh, the stress to a different form where it's positive. Because the negative stress is, you know, toxic. In that straight, stressed out state of mind, they won't eat. So we need to exercise them, uh, then put their food, you know, at a minimum right next to it, okay. and then down the line, you exercise them and put the food right inside there, and then further on, and then after they start to just be ready to eat at any time, then start feeding them in there and shut the, the door. But this, you don't want to feed that anxiety that they've got. They wouldn't eat in that state of mind anyway. want you to see that there's no force, there's just a brick wall or a tether. Uh, anybody who tries this and is forcing the dog and they're fighting you, this dog is just struggling, not fighting. If you were going in to fight, I would stop. I would do something different, slow it down even more. You can see his brain is inside there. Could you see him move his head around? His brain was inside for a moment. That's his brain's in there. So I'm moving my boundary back just incrementally to see if, if he'll hold it himself. Because sometimes me holding my ground just creates more oppositional reflex. So I want to see if it's reflex or see when I, as I'm loosening my hands, he's standing, he's standing there. Um, so what I had was getting a reflex but I kind of have to have a little bit of it just to hold this boundary. So you can see it's less and less. The first few are always the longest. His heart rate's gone way down. You see how fast he wants to come out, but even once we get out, he's not as panicked, so that's good. Oh, hey bud. Hey bud. That's a good boy. Let's try it again. Nice. That's a good guy. That's a good guy. So even just having him stand right here in the doorway, if he's not escaping, that's going to benefit us on the way back in. See, he's using his nose now. Now I'm doing this, controlling the exit. I don't care that he's coming out. I'm controlling the intensity in which he comes out. There we go. There we go. By giving affection, I'm just kind of massaging some of the tense uh, energy out. You can see that he's, he's upright and he's not, he'd like to go away from it, but he's not trying to escape like he was. And, the, and the, the biggest key here is that each time he goes in there, even if I've kind of, you know, manhandled him in there, he gets to come right out. But as long as he's not escaping. I want him to see that he can get out without escape, and so that he can see that, that it's the same thing going in. He's going to be able to come out. That was my fault. Most of the time they let him out, both of them out, they run around and reinforce all the anxiety they had in there. This is how we want them to be able to come out. Nice and calm, relaxed. There we go. King of calm.
So he's learned if he goes in, he can come out. But now he's got to learn how, how intensely I come out. Where's my mindset? His mind was in escape, now it's in acceptance, see? And he can come out. These are going to pay off in, hugely for him on going in. Before it was the, the entrance and the exit. Escape, 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 right? I'm doing the same thing, I'm just blocking. Not allowing the escape mind to get out of the crate. And once he's in an acceptance mind, see he's trying to get underneath. And here he comes. Here he comes. See, there he is. And he can walk out. Yeah, that's a good boy. I'll give you a moment. Yes, hello. Who's giving you that psychological challenge, huh? Okay, here we go. One more time, bud. He's gonna escape, 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 escape. Just all this energy pushing into my hands, pushing into my hands, pushing into my hands. Here he comes. There we go, buddy. Hey, how's it going, pal? So it took a long time before we could just get him to where he would go in without, you know, trying to stay out. Now it's the same process on the way out. He's just leaning into my... Escape. It's not as intense escape anymore, but it's still escape. You can see, he just wants to get right out. And here he comes. You can see the nose opens and the body slows down. When the nose opens, everything slows down. Because 60% of the information that the dog receives as truth comes from the nose. This guy's blind, so I'm not gonna. I, I'm doing everything I can to uh, reduce all confusion. Yeah, we're gonna start to come back. Don't. The only corrections that I'm making are simply uh, the education that I want uh, to give him. And if if you want to call this a correction that I'm not letting him out, then it's a correction. But all I'm doing is helping him understand that he can come out if he has the right combination. If you password, you can't get past the, the VIP rope without the right password. And in this case, the password is a, a calm energy. This is leaning into my, my hand. Oh, that for sure can come out. You can for sure come out after sitting down in there. That is a good boy. Yes, indeed. Ooh, he's a good fella. Ooh, he's a good fella. Well, you can't point him out to me because you can't see. But I'm telling you, you're the good fella. Slipping back into the skip. There we go. There we go. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, huh? Okay, you ready to do it again? I think we're getting close to him, not trying to escape when he... If your dog jumps out of the crate excited or in an escape state of mind, that's what you're, you're telling him, however long, if you have him in there for three hours. If he escapes in that state of mind, or we let him out too excited, we're saying the more excited, the more fearful you are, then you can get out. So it rewards them every time we let them out in that state of mind. There we go. Nice and easy stepping out. He's like, I think I'm gonna just be turned around anyway, so I'll just stop right here. Nice half-ass effort.
effort to get out. That's great. We're getting close. If you notice right now, I'm letting him out before he's completely down because I want him to see that as he relaxes, I'm letting him out. So you can shift back and forth, but it's very important in the end that they understand I'm completely relaxed before they can get out. So I want to reward the fast turnaround and less intensity coming out and the less uh, escape. I want to reward that by allowing him to come out like this is great. That's nice. That was beautiful, right? Who did that? Who did that, huh? Yeah. See, that's, that's not no reason to come out here that fast, right? It's like, oh my God. Did you see him like, oh, what am I freaking out about? What am I freaking out about? turns around, I'll even let him out right now because this is a big one. I'm not having to do anything. If he turns around and steps out, that's fine with me right now because in his brain he's inside anyway. And I want him to be inside and see it's not dangerous. And then he can come out if he wants. This is excellent on his own. Mm -hmm. This is excellent that he's sitting here this whole time with his head inside. People misunderstand this, like, you're not doing anything. Well, everything isn't, you know. Good boy. Those moments right there are worth waiting for and creating. Look at that pride. Look how relaxed he is. You guys saw how he was before, so stressed out. What we did was we gave him something to do to challenge his mind. Because when he challenges his mind, he does circles and, and it becomes compulsive. Look at that. Look how proud he is of himself. Look how proud he is of himself. Always got his head low and spinning. Like he feels satisfied right now. But we're going to we'll keep rolling right now until he goes in and stays in there. But this right here. I'm rewarding this state of mind like no other. Look at that pride. Yes. Look at that pride. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Good. Oh, I sit right down. That's good. You can see that each step of the way, I'm going further and further. Now he can go in and out because he's not trying to escape out. And he's sitting down right now. So I like to get multiple rep reps in on each level, that, you know. So I'm gonna rep some more. We're just now seeing the dog. You know, before we were always seeing the animal. <laughs> we're finally at the dog now. Who's the coolest cat in the world? Yes, you're welcome, buddy. You are, oh yes, you're welcome. He just drains so much energy, so much energy. And people misunderstand uh, discipline as, as a punishment or correction all the time, but discipline is just simply rules. And knowing the rules and following the rules means you're disciplined. Learning the rules drains energy. This is a different dog, right?
right? So anybody who's confused about what to do for psychological uh, challenge, you find something they've never done and you become very patient with them and let them work through it. It's not a trick. I'm not working on a trick here. I'm working on a, a state of mind and this is a problem for him. So if you, know, you expose yourself, uh, the more you expose yourself to a, a perceived danger, the less threatening it, it, it is, you know? And that's all we're doing right now, is showing him that it's not as threatening as you thought it was. Come on, right over here, that's a good fella. That was a, who is a good guy? I mean, if we look back at all of the ones he got out and wanted to run, got out and wanted to run, this is appreciation, I believe. I believe he's saying, thank you so much. I haven't felt this level of calm in five years. And, I mean, this is just, this is more relaxed than I anticipated coming from him. My goal is for him to go in there and say, you know what, I'm fine in here. Nice and slow and, yes, who did it? Who did it? That tail's coming up. Oh, who's a love bug? Oh, why don't you get in there and snuggles? Yes. Yes. One of the things that I, you know, why I don't use so many treats when I do this stuff, because it's, it becomes a trick. So they learn what to do to get the food. And, you know, over time they're conditioned to go in there and everything. But I want them to uh, learn what to do. And, and then there can be food later, but I don't, want him, I don't want him to learn what to do to get the food. If I go in there, you give me food, right? I want him to learn that being in there, look, he's still half up. That's great. That's a good boy. We're getting there, son. This is amazing. He can back out if he wants to. Look, he's using his nose. That's great. That's great. Go back in there now. that I'm talking to him now, this is the state of mind you want to reward. The pattern you set is the pattern you get, right? So if I'm sharing affection with him and he's anxious like you saw a little bit ago, I'm telling him to remain anxious. And you know what? I accept all the possible problems that come with anxiety, like running into the street and getting hit by a car or jumping through a window. I accept all those because I'm giving you affection while you're anxious. So. I'm, now you hear me talking to him because this is where I want it. This pleases me, right? This pleases me to, to go in and out and trust me. So I want to reward that. Is that paw, paw confusion? There we go. Oh, goodness gracious sakes alive. And if he wants to come out, he can all he wants. That is one heck of a good boy. He drained so much energy. I'm so proud of you. I want you to know, for humans and dogs, accomplishment is the main ingredient to confidence. And every time you accomplish something, it goes into your, your bank. And the more you accomplish, the more confident you become. And you can see this guy, he needed to get relaxed before he can get confident. But you saw his pride up like that right this is great no way shape or form do I want to end this right now you know uh, I want to do it some more but I'm this is this is where it's starting to succeed all that time to get to here is just to get to here and start so now I'm going to teach him that when his butt goes down he can, my wall goes Look at that. You see, now I accomplished something. Look how confident I am. That's a good boy. We just changed this dog's life perception of this crate in however long we've been doing this. Not only is he laying down, he's curved his body, his mind is, is curved toward the inside. And now he can come out if he wants to right now. This is what I wanted, the nose open. So he's starting to say, I think this smells like me in here.
think we've heard him quiet. Like in a, in a calm way. He's not quiet, like shut down, quiet. Look at that. So he's investigating. He's like, I, I didn't even know I had all this stuff. Look at that. It's beautiful. Now he's gone into the grooming ritual before bed. And when he truly is, I mean, I'll give it another five or ten minutes uh, where he lays down and forgets about it and I'll shut it. Or, or I could go into this uh, stage of the process and shut it when he freaks out, wait till he calms down, then let him out. Because this is new. This will be new. It'll look like the old five years. This is what it looks like now. Ooh, my hips. Cool.